Today I added in all my YouTube videos a super thanks button. You'll see it here at the bottom of the screen. And what I want you to do is if you think these videos are helping you and they're of value to you, please consider contributing to the program. It helps with some of the incidental expenses I have. And obviously I'm not doing this for money, but it certainly does help out the production. Appreciate you by contributing below at the super thanks button. All right, welcome back to another episode of Future Pro Goalie School YouTube channel. Lots. Do I think I'm the best goalie coach that ever lived? No. Can I help other goalie coaches by studying the people that I have and passing along that knowledge? Of course. So please take this advice for goalie coaches with a grain of salt. I'm not trying to criticize you. I don't want anybody offended because I know goalie coaches can sometimes be a little bit touchy. What I'm trying to do is actually help out the goalie coaching industry by giving you some advice. Weigh it, use it. Maybe it helps you, maybe it doesn't. Here we go. All right, here we go. Here's my list. Got 10 on here. Here's the top 10 things goalie coaches can do to improve their jobs. Like a young goaltender, it is not wise to mimic others. Just like you don't want a young goalie to copy only Hank's movements, mannerisms, and stances, a goalie coach should intake info from all goalie coaches and distill it down to their own philosophy that passes critical analysis. So, simple terms, don't copy other goalie coaches you've seen. Be your own goalie coach. Bring in all their info and become your own goalie coach. Keep the stuff that works for you and get rid of the stuff that doesn't. Number two, don't prevent your students from being exposed to other goalie coaches. Those that are of that mindset are clearly insecure and create a goalie that can't think and evaluate for themselves. Now, Obviously, we love our students and we do take credit when they have success. Clearly, I'm the Hall of Fame example of leveraging the success of the goalies that I've coached, however little. But for a goalie to be a great goalie, they're going to have lots of goaltending coaches in their career. It's not all one goalie coach. And they can learn a lot from each goalie coach without screwing up their game. So encourage your goalies to learn from other goalie coaches. Don't just make it about you. Make it about your goalie. Number three. Don't pump your own tires when one student has success. Again, a classic case of insecurity when your coaching self-worth is tied to the individual successes of one or two goalies. Now, obviously, it's nice from a business point of view to promote your successes, and clearly I'm the guy that does that all the time. But again, when you're starting out, a young goalie that you're coaching doesn't need to hear about the one or two guys that you've coached that went on. Establish your credibility with your students based on your content and your trust that you put into them. Don't make it about the goalies you've coached when you're delivering a lesson. Number four, credit all drills to the authors wherever possible. Be a drill thief and adding to your database is smart, but attribute to whomever you learned the drill from. So at the end of the day, I've spent years putting out content. Most of the drills I've learned from people smarter than me, and wherever possible, I mention where they come from. For instance, the big screen board is a Mitch Korn drill. Medicine ball work, Mitch Korn. So go on Instagram, go on YouTube, look at all my stuff, look at all the other goalie coaches stuff, and when you bring that out and you publicize that drill, use it to help your goalies, but also make sure you attribute where it came from. This is common, common courtesy. Number five, everything your childhood goalie coach told you isn't gospel. Search out a wide range of other coaches and any online material you can find. Now, obviously, my goalie coach was Mitch Korn. I believe in a lot of stuff he does. Some of it I don't because I have a critical filter and discernment. You should be the same way. Just because you went to goalie school with some dude for nine years in a row, his stuff isn't perfect, myself included. So be a critical thinker and learn from lots of other goalie coaches. Number six, this is my pet peeve. Please stop trying to sound smart with big, trendy goalie words. Do you think Butch Harmon, the famous golf coach, or Bill Belichick has to prove their merit by having a polysyllabic Tourette's every session? Words like head trajectory, panda, lateral shift, all these cool proprietary buzzwords, don't need it. Just use simple words. You don't need to impress anybody by coming up with the word you learned on Instagram. Keep it simple. That's teaching 101. Use the simplest word possible instead of the biggest word possible. Number seven, be professional. Hat on forward, tracksuit done up, hire proper shooters. Actually write out a lesson plan for each lesson and keep notes of each goalie you work with. Now, here's what a lot of goalie coaches do. They show up, hats on backwards, tracksuits half done up. Some I've even seen in shorts, big dipping, booze on their breath, all that stuff. 
If you want to become an NHL goalie coach, see what they look like. Have you ever seen an NHL goalie coach with their hat on back or with a dip in? Have you ever seen them with a, a team tracksuit halfway done up? Be professional. If you want to become a professional goalie coach, mimic the goalie coach as far as how they approach it. Not necessarily the content, but how they look and what the job requires. Just be professional. That's simple. Number eight, ask yourself if the drill you are doing is actually realistic. For example, very few shots in a game are launched from a shooter statically standing in one area. You see this all the time on Instagram. Scroll down, look through YouTube. There's a bazillion drills goalie coaches put out there with a guy standing stationary, shooting, flipping, floating pucks at the goalie. Move here, move here, move here, move here, move here. Shot from a guy standing there. Does that ever happen in a game? Make your drills realistic. Number nine, avoid goofy at Hey Barber and at Beer League Beauty moves on your goalies during breakaways, etc. because it's a waste of time and parents aren't paying you to do goofy crap. It's cool you can do a toe drag. It's cool you can do a Michigan. And as a goalie coach, we handle the puck a ton. But do realistic, age-appropriate shots on your kid. The parents aren't spending all that money for private lesson to see you doing goofy crap. Number 10, this touches on some of the stuff I mentioned earlier about being professional, but chewing tobacco, beer breath, being late, or sending one of your underlings to do your lessons for you is a sign of amateur hour. At the end of the day, I'm not perfect. I've done some of the goofiest stuff you can imagine and almost everything on this list I maybe used to do, but I've now grown and hopefully matured a little bit. Use these tips to help you become more professional. The more professional of a product you deliver, the more successful you'll be as a goalie coach, the more money you can charge. So at the end of the day, be a professional goalie coach. Simple. And stop using that word at the end of the day. I use that way too much.